What is up everybody? Welcome to another episode of Hooking with Hutch. So, just a disclaimer from the beginning. I am by no means a pro at catching lake trout, nor do I consider myself a pro, nor am I a charter of any type. I'm just a guy, the best way to say it is a Guggen. If you don't know what a Guggen is, it's just a guy that is good enough, gets out there, catches some good fish. But he's not a professional by any means. He's just a guy that enjoys fishing and going out and getting the job done. That's exactly what I am. So... I have studied a bit. I always study my fish species. I try to be very knowledgeable, but again, by no means a pro. Just want to put that out there before we get started. So today is a very heavily requested video I put on Facebook. Would you guys like me to do a how-to video on lake trout? And you guys gave me a lot of positive feedback and I was really happy to see that. So that's what I want to do for you guys. I want to get this video up immediately. So today is going to be my take on how I caught my first lake trout because Obviously, I'm 22 years old. I went 22 years of my life not even knowing how to get a lake trout. And I know there's a lot of other people around here that have no idea. They've never caught one and they really want to catch one because they are a hell of a fish. They're a lot of fun. So that's my goal here today is I just barely got on my first one just last week. And I'm going to help you get out in the elements and catch your very own lake trout. So today is going to be filmed partially here in my kitchen <laughs> and partially out in the elements. We're going to shoot right to the causeway. We're gonna talk about gear. All right, so we're here, let's talk some gear. So for rods, I have two medium fast action rods. If you wanna know what they are, I got the IM6 Lose Rod, LZR Pro Speed Stick, and I got a Berkley Amp Rod. Uh, so yeah, like I said, they're both medium fast action rods. This one is a 610 foot on the loose speed side. On the Berkley side, it's just a six foot, I'm running 17 pound Berkley Tri-Line on both rods. You're going to want a big net. You're going to want some kind of, you know, pliers or some kind of grip so you can get the hooks out of this fish's mouth. Because not only do you got to worry about treble hooks on a big jerk bait like this, which is what we'll be using, but you also got to worry about these fish's teeth. They do have some, a pretty nasty set of chompers on them. So you're going to want a pair of pliers, preferably long nose pliers. So you can keep your fingers and hands well away from these hooks and well away from that fish's mouth. All right, so perfect. We just talked about some gear. Obviously, I said I have a 610 rod and a six foot rod, medium action. By no means do you guys need to have the same brand rods nor the same dimensions or anything. Just a medium fast action rod is uh, preferred. I said I had 17 pound test. Now you don't need to go 17. You guys can get away with like 10 pound and stuff like that, but realize this is a fish. I can get very big and you do not want a story about the one that got away so i like to play it on the safe side i was running some 17 pound berkeley tri line like i said uh as well as a net you guys don't need a net you guys can try to you know get the fish in by hand but realize it's definitely more difficult this is a fish with teeth as well as it's just never easy getting a fish in by hand offshore if it is a big fish so net is definitely something to think about if you don't have one but by no means do you actually need one Long nose pliers though, on the other hand, that's gonna be a must guys. You're really gonna want that because treble hooks, you don't wanna get one in the hand, especially if the hook is still attached to the fish. And like I said, these fish have some pretty gnarly chompers on them. You wanna keep your hands away from there. So some long nose pliers, I'm sure you guys got some hanging around in the garage. Definitely a smart move. So without further ado, we're gonna go back to the causeway real quick. We're gonna talk about time of year and uh, water temperatures. Now let's talk time of year. So in the summer, you're not going to see lake trout by shore in the summer as i was saying in the intro they're going to be out in 70 to 100 plus feet of water deep deep down and you're dropping jig type lures like big plastic swim bait jig type lures straight down i'm sure there's a plethora of other things that i don't know for sure because i've never done it but they're just dropping them straight down reeling them right up and these fish are clobbering them so before we go any further on that topic when i was talking about those jigs there's some like swim jigs, soft plastic, uh, like little swim bait jigs, something like this. It's by Savage Gear. I don't believe they make it anymore, but there's obviously things just like this, as well as uh, these bucktail jigs. These are some of the stuff that guys will be using in that deep water when they're in a boat, as well as downriggers is very, very common for lake trout. So if you guys are in a boat, that's just something to keep in mind. Anyways, back to the causeway. Now this is a little different. We're in November. Today is a... 40 some odd degree day it's pretty cold this is pretty sweet we're going out on the causeway it's a little bike path and it literally walks throughout 
right to the middle of the lake. So know what kind of depth you're fishing with because once we get to the bottom of this pier where we're going to be fishing and where we caught our fish yesterday, it's about 30 to 40 feet deep there, which is absolutely perfect. 20s, 30s, 40s, perfect depth to be fishing for these fish in. Another good rule of thumb, guys, carry some kind of temperature tracking device with you. I just keep a little thermometer laser pointer with me, which we all know what these are now, thanks to Corona. We're gonna look at the temperature of the water here, just get a scan right on the surface. This is 50 degrees. Get a little bit closer, make sure we get an accurate read. Yeah, I'm getting 50s. So that's not bad. 50 degree water, they're still biting because they already moved in here because the water temperatures got well into the low 40s. So water's cold, perfect for a cold water fish. You don't have to carry something this fancy with you guys. You can just carry literally just a regular little house thermometer, tie it on with line, throw it out in the water, leave it there a few seconds, reel it in, you'll get your temperature. Pretty basic, but just a good rule of thumb. So I know what you're thinking. Great, you just threw a bunch of temperatures at us. Let me explain it a little bit clearer. So I was mentioning, you know, in the summer, you know, they're not gonna be by shore. They're gonna be in deep water. 70 to like 100 plus feet of water is where guys are typically fishing for them in their boats. Here is the reason for that. So though lake trout can survive in water temperatures of 70 to 73 degrees, their absolute preferred temperatures are 46 to 59 degrees. So in the summer, when we got water temps of like 70, 80, and up because our summers can be very warm that's why they're down in deep water so they can reach that cool core temperature opposed to now that the water is cold it's dipping into the 50s the 40s you know we're getting ready for the ice to come they can now come up to shore and they can now feed on you know bait fish and whatnot now that the water is cooler it is really helpful to know what the water temperature you're fishing in is because that can lead up to what kind of fish you could catch all the way to how you should be fishing your bait. So once, since the water is so cold, I realized a reeling retrieve worked well because the wind, when you're just doing a jerk technique with the jerk bait, it was dragging the jerk bait still because the wind was so strong on the line. So when we started doing our reeling technique, just swimming it in, since the water is cold, we're gonna do a much slower rather than if we were fishing a jerk bait in the spring or the summer for some bass. So we're gonna be a lot more gingerly about it, reel it in slow, give these fish a chance to catch up to it and eat it. So before we go any further, I will say you can still fish the jerking technique, which we'll go over that later uh, while we're back at the causeway. I'll show you how I fish a jerk bait. But I was talking about the jerking technique and then just the regular reeling retrieve, swimming it in like a crankbait style. Now, if you notice on the left side of the causeway, it's perfectly calm. So you could do a jerking technique there get away with it because all you're doing is you're going jerk jerk it's making that bait go in a rapid motion coming to a dead stop and that's what you want the reason i wasn't fishing on the day i caught a lake trout if you notice on the right side it's very windy and it's wavy so you're doing that jerk technique and you want that stop you want an immediate stop but see the wind is so strong it was dragging the line the easiest way to say it is when the wind was taking that line it was just dragging the jerk bait through and it kind of ruined the presentation. So that's why we switched to a reeling retrieve. So the simplest way to put it, you got calm water and not a lot of wind. You can do that jerk technique if that's what you want to do. If you got windy and wavy water, just do a slow reeling retrieve. Alrighty, so let's talk baits now. I'm going to do this segment here at my house due to the fact that I didn't have all my baits with me the day I was uh, filming out there. So first things first, I'm just going to show you guys the bait that I actually caught my lake on. I have the exact le replica. The other one's hung up on the wall. Uh, so here we go. It's pretty simple. It's a deep diving jerk bait. You got three sets of trebles. Now I have a pink strip on the top, little black dot, clear hollow body, and it's got a red tip head there, as you guys can see. A little bit of white for the gill plates. Now if you listen, there's some rattles in there, which I've noticed seems to work better than non-rattling bait. I think it's something about the rattles, just get those fish riled up and piss them off and make them want to bite. Because that'll take me to my next bait, which would be the rattle trap. So, this is just a cheap option, guys. You can literally go to Walmart and get this exact same bait. It's usually in the clearance section. Really simple bait. There's nothing really to it. You can fish it 
any depth you want. It all depends on how fast you are reeling. But yeah, that's the rattle trap. Something about these rattles really get these fish pissed off and makes them want to bite. So rattle trap is definitely something to carry in your tackle bag with you when you head out. So when it really comes down to it, I've noticed jerk baits really work best for me. So I have a plethora. Rapala is absolutely great. You gotta notice a trend here. There's pink on this one as well. We'll look at this jerk bait. Pink on it as well. It's kind of a little different design. And guys, I stress you're gonna want the deep divers of the big spoon on it. So when you go out to buy your own, check the packaging, see what the depths are. So like these husky jerks here, Rapala. It says on the back that it has about a diving distance of 20 feet. It's perfect. Uh, it's not actually Husky Jerks in here though. Takes me to some more baits. This is a great brand to buy. So these are Smithwicks. Again, pink. Pink on this one as well. Deep Divers. Smithwick isn't something you're going to find at Walmart. So if you have a local bait and tackle store, that's really the place to look for this exact brand. These, I think... Hands down were like my favorite jerk bait to be using out there for these lake trout. Really don't know the science behind it. They just seem to be following this bait in much more than anything else I tried. Because I was out there for four days, I used a lot of different things. Here's another Smithwick. As you guys can see, there's no pink on this one. We'll get into that a little bit later. As far as size goes, this is the huge Yozuri. The reason I cracked this out is because don't be afraid to throw a huge bait for these fish. Now this is a fish that will actually go to the lengths of cannibalism and will eat other lake trout. So just realize they're not scared of a very big presentation. They will absolutely bite and eat this. So that takes me into the next part of the segment. Why do I have so many pink jerk baits? You know, such as this one, some pink on this one. Obviously our Smithwick here that has a lot of pink on it. And the answer is simple. I tried a plethora of lures for these. I tried this Smithwick. I tried jointed jerk baits and you know, orange and yellow fire tiger, you know, craw color. I tried silver, yellow, red. I tried blues, blacks, and silvers. And the answer is uh, quite simple, really. It's not a matter of, you know, this color wouldn't work or something. You know, any one of you guys could go out and fish this jerk bait. I know a lot of guys have luck with black and white, black and silver. It was just a matter for me when I was out there, I was getting follows on pink, but I fished all these lures, you know, for hours and I was getting absolutely no follows. It just was a matter of that's what the fish wanted that day. It's what they really wanted all week was pink. So to me, pink was the best color. So if you guys go out there, I strongly suggest you guys pack pink with you because I think that'll give you your guys' best opportunity to catch one. But that's just my experience. See, that's where I'm not a professional. I cannot be sitting here being like, this is absolutely the best color. It's the only color you're going to catch it on. That's not the case. Bring other colors with you, obviously. But I feel strongly with pink because that's where I had my best experience. It's what I caught mine on. I had at least eight other follows on just pink lures opposed to other lure colors where I had no follows at all. Now, I could say where color might not matter is with like this rattle trap. Since it has so much noise, it pisses those fish off and they're just gonna wanna eat it. But when it comes to baits, guys, what I'm gonna really suggest is pink jerk baits, rattling jerk baits, and uh, rattle traps. So to simplify it, I showed you guys all of these colors and different baits just to give you guys an idea, a visual idea, because I could just sit here and be like, oh, get a Rapala jerk bait, go get a rattle trap, and just say that, and you guys might not exactly know what those are, because not everybody here is, you know, been fishing for all their life and maybe are new fishermen. So I want to explain this in most detail for anyone to watch this and have their best opportunity to get a fish. So when it really comes down to it, guys, this is like four or five inch jerk bait. This one is, you know, six plus inches. Don't be afraid to throw big baits, but if you want to just get, you know, the down to the nitty gritty, simple, you know, four or five inch jerk baits, got to be deep divers. That's important. I really, really like pink. So I suggest pink highly. And then if you can find jerk baits that are pink, they rattle. That's great. You'll want that. I suggest bringing a rattle trap with you, you know, something that's loud that's going to piss the fish off. But yeah, really, colorization, I'm really going to say pink. Pink is important. Just have some kind of pink on the lure. Like, 
as you guys can see, this, this lure is not all pink. There's purple, there's yellow, there's brown. But it's got a little bit of pink on there. And I just think that's something that sets these lake trout off. So that's really just my suggestion with baits. Obviously, I'm sure a lot of you guys have a number of tackle. Um, you might go out and buy a bunch of different things. Don't give up on anything. You know, Try it a good amount of times. See what's working best for you. Because I was at the causeway, this is what was working for me. You guys could be in Burlington, fishing off a pier or something like that. Or somewhere else around the world. And pink just ain't working for you, but maybe like green's working for you. So, ultimately, based off your location, you're going to have to try and see what color it is. So this was just my suggestions. But obviously, don't be afraid to try different things. Now let's talk knots actually too. Because you don't want to just go with a regular old fisherman's knot. So honestly, you should be feeling... Since using a deep diver, you can be hitting rocks. You can see how this is a little bit frayed here. You'll feel it. It should feel smooth. If you feel anything rough, go right behind where the rough spot is. Cut it. So instead of a regular fishing knot, we're going to do a polymer knot. So all you do is you grab the line with two fingers here, my thumb and my pointer. You bring it up here. So you're just bringing the line next to each other, right? So all you got to do is grab down here. See how you get that tiny little loop? You're going to stick that right through where you would normally stick your line if you were just doing, you know, like a regular fisherman's knot. Now you get that loop out the other side. You're going to bring it up. Make sure you don't lose your tag of the line that you recently stuck together. Now what you're going to do is you're going to wrap it around. You make a loop. You're going to bring this circular piece that you made and put this loop through the loop you just created. You're going to tie that down tight, but we're not done. Next thing you want to do is you want to wrap it around the whole bait. So if it's not enough, all you got to do is pull. You'll pull a little bit extra of the tag there. You bring it all the way around the bait, and then all you do, if you did it correctly, it should tighten right down. And make sure that that knot goes right into your, your little steel loop there. Obviously, always check your knot. Make sure it's tight, isn't going to break just from your pressure because you don't want to find out you have a bad knot once you're on a fish because that will more than likely be the one that got away and that is a story none of us want. So here we go. So we got our deep diving rattling jerk bait about four or five inches. We got pink colorization. We got our rod and reel. We have the perfect location to fish in. Good temperature to be fishing in we're all set basically now all we gotta do is get in the water and hook into one of these amazing fish sorry there's probably a really bad demonstration of how to tie a polymer knot but guys just use that knot i use it for everything now it's the strongest knot you can tie so they say i haven't broken off on it besides having toothy fish slice the line but only way you're going to avoid that is if obviously you get a steel leader or some kind of leader that prevents them from doing that. Now, well, when running these jerk baits, guys, I like to give it a little tug, 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 kind of keep a uh, consistency in the cadence. And then sometimes I'll hit it with a one, two, three. Just how I like to push it. But if you guys want to do something a little more simple and just swim it in, just reel it on in like a crankbait, you guys can do that as well. I really just switch up cadence, so sometimes I'll just do three tugs, pause, three tugs, pause. Just do whatever feels right, try different things, see what gets the most bites, and rinse and repeat, really. Alrighty, guys and gals, that's really all for the video. I uh, truly hope that all this information helps you guys in some way. Remember, this is not a professional's advice. This is just my experience in catching my first lake trout and me doing my absolute best to give you suggestions to get on yours. I'm just a guy who loves fishing. I'm not a professional guide or anything like that. I just love chasing after these new species and chasing after monsters as well as I love helping you guys, the people, out on you know getting on some of these fish yourself so i really hope deep down in me that you get an opportunity to go out there use this advice and get on you know your own monster and experience the true strength and the absolute pure beauty of this fish and hopefully you let her go and let her swim back out there and get real big so without further ado guys make sure to like and subscribe to the channel it is all very much appreciated it's free and it takes two seconds 
the subscribe button is right under the video big red block hit that stuff for me real quick and i will see you guys in the next video go get it on a monster